Hello everyone, this is Tasuke here, and in today's video, the video I'm doing now, I'd like to reflect a little bit on my life. Now, the reason that I'd like to reflect on my life a little bit is because when I woke up this morning, I had a memory go through my mind from a long, long time ago, and it made me think about my life, where I've been, where I went, and how I became who I am today, how I became a better person. So, for one, I'd like to let people know about the little memory I had this morning. This morning, I woke up and I felt achieved with a goal that I personally set, and a memory just went through my mind. And it was at an aquadome, and what happened was I was just swimming around, and someone asked me for help because they lost their earring, and this was a girl I remember. I don't remember whether it was who I think it is. I think it was Crystal, but it could have been someone else entirely. But I think it was her. She had like a little, st one of those stud ones that go in your ear. And thinking back, I look at it as a good thing what I did. I look at it as doing a, a very, very good thing. And so when I think about it, I'm proud of myself for what I did then. Because all my life I put myself down. And I've had a lot of reason to as well. But at the day, I was the only one with a pair of goggles that went around your eyes like so and around the nose. And no one else really had any goggles like I did. Mine were clear, you could see the bottom of the pool. And everyone else who had glasses had tinted plastic ones. and. They're dark, so you couldn't see much. Anyway, I was in the pool, and this is in the 1.2 meter deep, I think, end of the pool. Very deep, and people swam around there, even when they were short. And I swam all the way around the bottom of where she was hanging out, and I went looking for her stud, and I went to the bottom, and I saw it, and it was a Dimenti in it, and it was a silver one, and I've pulled it out. Now, the way I pulled it out was, it was just a stud, and the piece that goes on the back was not there. That's the piece that stops it from falling off, slipping off, and it's the point that stops you from getting stabbed by it. So I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, it's a good thing I did what I did, because someone could have touched the bottom of the pool and got stabbed by it. So that's why I look back and say it's a good thing. Now, if I go back to the very beginning of my life, it was great. I had fun. Shortly after, as soon as I entered primary school, because I was in kindergarten, once I moved from kindergarten to primary school, that's when my troubles begin. As soon as I went to primary school, I got bullied like crazy. I, I can't even remember everything, but I do remember I got lots of bullies after me, and most of them were old. About a little bit younger than me, but that, that was the kind of bullies that went after me. The bullies are around about 13, 16, somewhere there. And I was always running away, trying to get away from these bullies. Hell, I didn't even mind leaving school and getting in trouble. I loved getting suspended back then. But I didn't like doing the wrong thing. But I ended up, because I was so honest back then, I told the truth. And slowly by slowly, because of how much crap I had to put up with, and how much bullying I had, I preferred to stay away from school. And because of what happened, I ended up starting to lie and lie and lie. And I became a really big liar. Hell, when we were little kids, we used to steal things. I remember stealing two dollars, and the proof of that two dollars, I still have a little mug that I bought with that two dollars on the day that I stole from the um, whiteboard in the class. So, I, even though I was through a lot of stress, I was doing a lot of bad things. And this is primary school, and this is about reception to year three. That's the period of time that I was really at primary school for, before as things changed a bit. In that period of time, I got so stressed out, my mum was called up, well, actually, she wasn't called up to take me away. She did a couple of times when I really, really was traumatised beyond belief. And I mean seriously traumatised. And 
there was a time where I remember she forced me to go to school. And I didn't want to go to school because of all the bullying I had to put up with. And I was getting sick of it. I was feeling really yuck. I didn't want to go to school. I kind of invented my own way of getting out of going to class and going out to recess. Even though I liked going out to recess, but I didn't. Now, the reason I didn't is because of all the bullies. I liked it when I was, had my own time and they weren't chasing me, but when I was getting chased, I didn't like it. So, my own way of getting away from all these problems was to basically do very hard stuff, but in the office. So, I went and did Year 7 work in the office, and I was in reception to Year 3 somewhere there, because I loved maps like crazy. I used to do those big figures of three to six digits so I did all that stuff and I did ones I didn't even know how to do and well I, I still got bullied a lot but I stayed away from the bullies as best I could it was very hard to though because they chased you they chased you everywhere you went now I'd like to try and go back to something I don't know if I clarified mum forced me to go to school that day, the principal and deputy principal were out there waiting to help get me out of the car because they knew I was coming and they knew it was going to be a handful. So, in all matter of um, speaking, it wasn't, well, verbal fight. It was physical fight and it was a little toddler about seven years old fighting a deputy principal, a principal and a mother. I was in the back seat, I didn't want to go to school, mum forced me to, as soon as we got to school, I was like, I'm not leaving this car, and then mum was like physically forcing me to get out of the car, and so I got in the boot, so after I got in the boot, they helped to get me out of the boot and pull me out, and then they were holding me, and I managed, when she got in the car, she has a manual at the time, had a manual at the time, she put it in gear, reversed out and I managed to break free from their grip and as soon as mum drove away I went to pick up the biggest stick I possibly could pick up and it was a massive stick by the way and I threw it at my mum my mum's car preferably and she said she was really upset about that but you know what I'm more upset about it because she pushed me to go to school and put me through all living hell and that that's what I feel bad about in the end, I tried to run and chase her, but she didn't stop on nothing. And the principal and deputy came walking down the road. They didn't run, they just walked. And I ended up walking back, and I was in tears. I was really upset. And so, when I went back to school, I was in the front office. I did work. Eventually, I got sent back to my class. Not that day, a few days later. And after that... There was an incident, I don't remember exactly what happened. I think it was a physical fight between me and the principal, which was a very rude principal, very not nice. And my mum didn't even like it because she was very mean to my mum. And so, that it's probably not exactly 100% accurate or right, but I do remember that I got excluded not suspended any more exclusion. I got sent to another school. I got excluded from that school. I got sent to another school again because I got excluded from that school. So I got excluded from two schools. When I went to that school, I really copped a lot of scary crap going on. The kids there were out of control in comparison to myself. I was traumatized and I had a freaking heavy chair almost hit me and it missed me by this much. Seriously, I was sitting at the table doing my work and a girl threw it. Not a guy, a girl threw it. And she was big and chubby and strong. And she, she was very nice when you got to know her. But she was, had a temper. She had a very powerful temper. And the people I met there had serious things they'd done. Not like what I got to excluded for, which was in fact a mistake and I did tell the truth but I did at that time have some lies that I did and I don't wanna I, I'm still guilty of those things so I feel bad about having to say them or 
what I'm doing, and I feel like I'd be a stronger person for saying, but I feel like I might get n negative criticism. So, there was something that happened. I ran away and I was upset, and uh, I was running pretty fast, and a girl grabbed my arm when I was running, and she was tall and she was fast, and when she grabbed me and stopped me in my tracks, my other arm swung around and got her in the guts, and that's what I got excluded for. But that's what happens when you're running away and someone grabs you. No one should grab you. No one should grab you like that anyway. Well, maybe when you're a little kid and you run out in front of cars, it's a different story. Because you save someone's life and they might punch you, but you at least save their lives. But you, you shouldn't have to grab someone because you risk hurting yourself. But you saving life is different. But I got excluded for that, and that's why I went to this other school again. So I've been to three schools in my time, in primary school. Now, I had a few moments during the second primary school that I was actually at, that I was actually enrolled to, the one that I got excluded from, but I got reinstated to be a student there. And I had a few, I had a lot of suicidal tendencies that I wanted to do. I wanted to hang myself by a basketball hoop because of how much stress the other kids gave me. I wanted to do some of the most gruesome things to myself in school that would have freak shocked the nation, shocked the world because of how much stress I put up with and I'm pretty sure no one would have wanted to see that. It was how bad I was feeling. I was at my lowest during primary school. But there was a change, and I want people to know that this is a serious thing that I'm talking about. That there was a change during primary school in which I started to want to change, and I wanted to be someone else. And this only happened when I was wandering around outside, and we still had an almond tree, and I just had a pain in my head, and then I saw all these pictures of Capta, and I heard a name being called out, and it said Tauska. And I saw all these things, I saw some gruesome things, I saw some very impressive things, and I knew this character. This character was Tauska. And he sacrificed himself and his god powers and everything to be with me, basically. And that's the best way to put it. That's what this character is to me. A very, very powerful character that chose to get rid of everything to be with me. And that's what that character is like. Though I don't want to tell everyone exactly the full thing about Talisker because it's kind of complicated because of who he is, what he done, and why he's here. Okay? It might not be to be with me, it might be something else. That's how Tasco was born. And I was in some of my final years of primary school, somewhere between year 5 and year 7 that this happened. That's when I came up with Tasco. I made a fool of myself with the name, because I went online, I had a online alias, and I was a little kid talking to grown-ups and talking about modding and games and stuff, and people laughed at me and picked on me and didn't like the way I was talking, but I was a very tough kid at the time for online stuff, because online stuff is like, these are just words, I don't even have to listen to them, whereas with reality, you physically have that emotion against you when you're talking to someone, it's like, HEY YOU GET OVER HERE! It, it's serious like that but when you read it offline on the internet it just says hey you get over here it's like yeah I don't have to listen to you but the other guy you is so scared you you feel like you have to get over there and you have to so yeah it's a little bit different reality also in those final years of primary school is when I did achieve that feat of helping someone out and helping them find their earring, their stud earring, in the pool. So, I'll look at that as sort of a heroic effort. I don't want to say hero 
I, I'm a hero for that because I'm not. It's a heroic effort, but it's not being a hero. I didn't do nothing that saved lives or anything. I just made someone feel better and did something good for someone. So, from high on in high school onwards, I still got bullied. I got into fights. <clears throat> and I wasn't so much of a liar in high school, though I still lied quite a fair bit. It only was during high school that it started to fade away, and it's, I stopped trying to lie so much. It wasn't even that hard since I knew Talshka, and that's who I... I looked at his character, I started writing a story, never finished it, and I looked at Talska and I said to myself that I want to become a character like Talska. I want to be Talska. Even if I can't become exactly Talska, I was going to try to become Talska, whether or not I liked it or not. Because I liked it, I liked the character, and that's why I wanted to. So, through high school, I started to change. I went from being the biggest light ever to slowly calming down. But I still had moments in high school where I said I wanted to kill myself, and I did want to. But there were moments in between primary school and high school that I did try, and I failed miserably at this, in attempting to. Because Talska was with me, and when I tried to, I had a knife to my throat one stage. I couldn't do it. I, it just had some physical energy against me. And I think I went to slash myself once and it, it, it just stopped. There was that much energy that I couldn't do it. And I didn't know why. People would say it's an emotional link within this world, like to our family members and our friends. But I hated everything and everyone because of all these problems that I had. I, I had so many problems. I had problems at home, I had problems at school. I still have problems at home. And I can't really say I have problems at school anymore because I'm in college and everyone's more responsible these days rather than back then. You still meet the casual jack or two, but it's not as bad. Now, I have a friend. His name is Joe, and he's been picked on in his life as well. I don't know if it was as bad as me, it might have been just a mental level, but I was men bullied on a mental and physical level, and not just by students either, I was bullied by teachers, principals, the, the whole lot, from primary school onwards. I think the schooling systems, most of them are corrupt in some way that they really need to be looked into, they really need to be fixed and perfected, because you have those... People that say they want to help, they end up making things worse. Sometimes the best medicine is to move away from problems. Though it's not a good idea to run away from them. Moving away, okay. You're not running. But running away is just going to make things worse. Because you suddenly cut someone off from the schooling system. What do you think's going to happen? The government's come after you. And the, the biggest sucker about that is... They don't give a damn on the problems that you've gone through in school. You'd have to basically contact the education system and tell them that there's problems happening while your kid is enrolled in school. And you'd have to have evidence that this stuff happens, like get reports from school. And if they don't give you reports, complain to the police and report the school for indecent acts of whatever it is that they're doing. I, I don't know exactly what the right terminology and words are for that, but that's what I say. Because it's not fair. I've had serious things happen. I could say my life was almost taken from my, from me at primary school quite a few times, but it might be an over-exaggeration. It might not be. Because some of the things, if, if I didn't have the strength that I had back then, probably would have been toasted. But I'm lucky that someone was able to do something externally after 15 minutes to half an hour, I believe it was. However, because I don't know what was happening, I don't remember. My eyes were closed most of the time because I was scared and I was holding on for my dear life from things that were happening. And it was, life was really, really scary back then. And I'm, I'm serious about that. Okay. 
in, the, in most recent years, I've still looked at myself as a bad person, but I've tried to be good. I've done some pretty cruel things on the internet with gaming with my friends. I've done some cheating, but within reason. I've learnt in primary school why I don't like cheating, because I played a game single player, I never had internet, and I cheated in that game. All we had was a 12G stick. When I say we don't have internet, we had a mobile broadband, and that cost $170, $80 a whole year for 12 gigabytes and that went like that. I never used it for online gaming, it sucked at online gaming. It was very slow internet. But I used it to download some mods, I downloaded mods, I edited the mods and I made myself so overpowered that I could kill everything. Everyone remembers Sh uh, Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl. I'd have been in year 5, 6 or 7 when it came out. I'm not sure when. But that would have had to been, because I'm year 13 currently, and next year I'm 14, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about 10 years ago, maybe, nah, that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, so if I go 13, we're 13 right this second still, so 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, I'll say 7 years ago the game came out, roughly. It might have been eight years, but I'm going to say roughly. And that game was really, really good, so <clears throat> I can't complain. I enjoyed it, and I cheated, and that's when I learnt that cheating is really bad because it screws up the whole point of enjoying a game. Hell, from that day onward, I got... From, from that day onward, I ended up not trying to cheat in games anymore. That was the time that the biggest, that was my biggest failure. However, there were times in future history that I did cheat. There was a game that I played and I wanted to know how many worlds were left, so I cheated to find out how many worlds there were because I never really looked on the internet. And I already had the last world unlocked. There were no more worlds. It's like, this, this cheat code doesn't work. Why isn't it working? And when we went and had a look at where we were, every level on that last world was unlocked. And there's only about nine levels on a world. And it's like you go see the boss straight away. You could go and select them. But most of these games were on time limits. Most of these levels were on time limits. So that's a downside to the game. <clears throat> so in recent days and recent years, I've changed from being the biggest frickin' liar onto the sun and biggest bullied kid to becoming who I am today and I don't think I'm so much of a bully as I was because I ended up turning into a bully myself because of all the bullying I put up with and all the lying I did and I used that because of how much stress I was under and I saw a way out through lying and cheating and getting away from my problems mostly you can consider it running away but there wasn't really much could do. These days I look back at how much of a chicken I was that I didn't pick fights. I didn't punch anyone. I didn't intentionally punch anyone. I didn't fight anyone. I just had times when I did hit people, but it wasn't that serious when I really did. I wasn't that powerful when I hit. I never tried to hurt people. I never did hurt people in some form or way. <clears throat> but you know what the worst thing was? A teacher was actually sacked from school, and the biggest reason why she was is because I was getting bullied right before her eyes, and she didn't do nothing about it. And she, all she had to say was, sorry. That, that's all she had to say, sorry, I didn't help you. She got sacked because of what she did about me. And in a way, I felt bad about what happened to her. But you know what? I felt I feel bad about myself and the position I was put in. A big, large teacher didn't have any support, and she didn't try to deal with the problem where I was getting punched and bullied and held down by other bullies. She didn't do nothing about it. She just watched as I got bullied. All she had to say was sorry. 
I really hate school. I really hated it. I, I don't hate it so much anymore because it's better. You have to go through all this shit as a little kid and what do you get out of it? A, a bunch of rubbish that really affects you. you it makes you want to hurt yourself. And when I look at how you can become in the future, who you can be as a future person, and who you are in the past, I, I feel sorry for every kid that's had to put up the same crap I've had to put up with. I feel sorry for myself, for goodness sake. Because no one should have to put up with that crap. I feel sorry for my friend, but he doesn't know what I've gone through, and he talks as if his life was so bad. He never had the same stuff that I put up with. He never went through the same things. I'm upset a little bit about that. But at the moment, he's in a position where I really want to be able to help him out because there's nothing I can do about my past, but there is something I can do about others' futures and my own future. I have the power to do that stuff. And you, the viewers, have a power to take my opinion, take my words, and do something about it. Make the system stronger. Make the system better than it is. Point out the flaws. And be honest. And for all those young viewers who probably watch this video, don't stand by and let people push you around and bully you. Don't be afraid to throw a whack, because the bully isn't as tough as he appears to be. As long as he feels more superior to you, he's going to keep hitting you and pushing you around. In certain conditions, you shouldn't hit him, you should try to get away. But always try to get help from someone who can do something about it. And if they end up breaking the rules and not helping you and protecting you, then they're in the wrong. They're the ones that are going to lose their job, just like the teacher lost her job because of what she did for, for me. She let me get bullied by kids and be pinned down and punched around and pushed, punched up and pushed around. I'm mentally scarred because of it, and I'm physically scarred because of it. I've, I can't change who I am, but I choose to try. The barrier that stops me from changing who I am is the one that says I can't change who I am. So I choose to try. And if I try, I can become a better person. If you don't try, you'll always be at the same point. You'll always go in circles, chasing your tail. I choose to break the circle and fly away. Talisker has wings. He can fly. But he never always has wings. In my story, it's like a magical ability allows him to be able to be more powerful and better and less bulky and... What not? I, I can't explain it identically to how he is, but there are scenes in my mind, if I was to make a video series, where he has the wings on and when he doesn't. Because the wings just can get in your way. It's an extra piece of a body material, whatever you want to call it, that just can get in your way. It can be magically there and it can magically not be there. It just shows that magic is real in some sense. I really hope you guys out there that have this sort of an issue can get through it. But be honest to yourself and don't be a bully. If, if you look at yourself from a perspective of would you do this to your, would you want someone else to do this to you, don't do it to others. If you want to hit someone, don't hit them. Hold back. You become a stronger person for it. And if you feel like you need to be stronger, Try to get out there and go to the gym and pump some weights or something and look tougher than the person bullying you. Because in the end, he's going to end up being scared of you. And if he is a real bully, he's going to have to change. You might have to be nice to him for him to change. <clears throat> it's very hard though, because some of us don't have that ability and that effect on people where we can change who they are or help change who they are. But there are people with the ability to do that, and they're the ones that have to try and use that ability to do something. If they can't, let someone else try. It's about persevering. I know a friend, I know a neighbour in the neighbourhood who does that stuff, and he talks to me as if I could do it. But the thing is, I know I can't do it because it's not 
what my abilities are. I have many abilities. I'm considered a jack of all trades, but that's only to a degree that I'm a jack of all trades. I'm not really a jack of all trades. Only in some sense am I. But anyway, guys, this video has dragged on for long enough. Thank you for watching and hearing my story and my revision of the past. I see myself now and look at myself now, since this morning, as a good person rather than a bad person. And I'm proud that I made this video, but I, I am reluctant to put it on the internet. I want people to know, though, that this stuff is real, and I want my friend to know that this is real, and it's happened. Because when I think about how he, what he's gone through and what I've gone through, I hate, I hate it. And the mental effect that it leaves on you, it, it can, it can scar you in a way that it can't heal. It can scar you to be a hater of people that get bullied. You know, you're complaining about being bullied. But you know what, there's people that did that to me, that's why I don't want to complain. And I feel bad, I hate them because they laugh at me as if, oh, that's nothing. And I put up with real serious stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to try and go into too much more because I think you've heard enough and it's enough information for you to go to understand. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. The more people like my content, the more I'll post. Acrophiliosis, everyone.